Best ever listeners, welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. I'm Ash Patel and I'm with today's guest, Alessandra Thompson. Alessandra is joining us from Nashville, Tennessee. She began her journey into real estate syndications after moving across the country. Alessandra now has two properties under management and she handles day-to-day asset management and operations. Alessandra, thank you for joining us and how are you today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing really well. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to just be on the show. It's our pleasure. Alessandra, before we get started, can you give the best ever listeners a little bit more about your background and what you're focused on now? Yeah. So a little bit about me is that I'm originally from California. I started my real estate investing journey probably last uh, in last March, 2020, a little bit of education a couple of months before I always knew that I wanted to just get into something that would free up my time and where I wanted to live and also just help me out financially. And so this is something that I just wanted to really get educated in. I started out by just looking up all the different ways of how I could get out of my W-2 and just into something that could offset my, I wanted to get more passive income. And so this is something that just kind of clicked with me in the multifamily world. I was just um, working in marketing in Los Angeles. And it wasn't until COVID that I realized like how unhappy I was with just like going into an office, especially with the LA traffic. And I was able to just kind of get my life in order of like where I wanted to be and I, I fell into multifamily. I found some mentors and people that were doing that I, what I wanted to be doing. And I just kind of got started and moved to Nashville to be in my market. And I'm just super excited to be here. I love the industry. I love the multifamily space. So that's a little bit about me. Yeah. I've got a lot of questions. <laughs> First of all, you're in your mid twenties and you had this epiphany that you wanted more free time you weren't happy with the W-2. Do you know how many people I interview in their late 30s, 40s, and 50s that had just had that revelation? How did you come to this? And you know, I would imagine a lot of people at that age are just like, all right, I'm going to work. I'm going to grind harder. And then you know, I'll retire early or I'll save up enough money and then I'll move on to something else. How did you have this awesome mindset at that young age? I think it's just I've never been able to like sit still in an office and like look outside and be like, I want to travel the world. And I want to be able to have the opportunity to spend more time with my family and friends. And also my, um, my father passed away about four years ago and he was working until the day that he passed. And that just really struck a chord in me that that was something that I could not do. I wasn't able to spend enough time with him. I wasn't able to just like be able to go on a trip with my family and friends or go out to somewhere because it was always just about work. And I think that life is meant for more than that. I I think that there's just boundaries that need to be have. And so I wanted to just be able to free up my time and um, be able to do the things that I want to do when I want to do them. And that's just, yeah, that's a a lot of where it came from. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. And thank you for sharing that. So um, you had that in the back of your mind, how did you bring yourself to take the action of leaving your job and pursuing real estate and moving to Nashville? Now you said Nashville was my market. Did you have the property first or no, did you move to no. Nashville just because Nashville's awesome? Yeah. So I, it's a really long story, but I'll get into the Let's nitty gritty. So I was living in Los Angeles and then COVID happened and I didn't see anyone for three months. I was just like, I'm just going to get my life together a little bit. And then my brother was living in Florida. He was doing door to door sales. And I just went, I was like, I haven't seen anyone. Florida seems like the, the right place to go just to visit. And so I went and visited. I stayed there for the entire summer. I started doing door to door sales with him. I made a good amount of money doing that while working my marketing job at the same time. And so I knew that I'd always wanted to get into real estate. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to put this money to use. I'm going to buy maybe a duplex and rent out one side. And then I just didn't want to, it just didn't seem like it was going to replace my job or my W2. And so I wanted to think outside of the box of like, where, how can I scale bigger? And so that's when I started falling into multifamily. I got on clubhouse when it first started and I just, it was an interesting space because I was just asking any question I wanted on the platform and just meeting different people, getting on phone calls, asking like 
all the questions that I could just jumping on the phone with people. And some, my mentor now, the people that I work with, they were in the space and I just jumped on a call with her and she said, um, well, that's, that's awesome that you want to get in the industry. If you're ever in Nashville, let us know, like, we'll grab a cup of coffee. And so I was just jumping around from States to States. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Nashville tomorrow. And I packed my stuff up. I, and I just moved to Nashville. I've never been here before. I thought I was coming into like the old country, but it's actually very different than that. And I showed up and I was like, Hey, I'm here for coffee. Uh, and I was still working my marketing job. So I had that security on the back end. And so I just told myself, take that risk, take that action, see if there's any value that I can provide for these people. And they happen to have an open position and they gave me the opportunity to start working with them. And so I quit my W2 job and jumped straight into multifamily. And I think through experience, I've been able to just grow a lot quicker and educate myself a lot faster by being like that boots on the ground. And I just took, I took action because if I didn't, then I would be in the exact same position that I was before. And I think that in my mind, I was just like, well, the worst that can happen is that I move home. So I might as well just go test it out. I had a really great time driving across the country. So um, it was a win for me and it it has been working out. So I'm just really grateful and excited. (laughs) I love your story. So what did you end up buying first? So we went in on a property in Little Rock, Arkansas, it's a 36 unit and we, that was last July and yeah, there was a lot to be done. It was a 1935 build and we just went straight in, replaced property management. Uh, we had, we ran into some issues and delays with closing just because with the HUD statements. And then we also found there was a huge groundwater stream running under the property. So we had a big mold issue that we were, it just delayed closing a lot, but that I'm actually going there tomorrow. I'm going to drive there and take a look at it. So you can take, I'll post it, but yeah. So that was the first property that I closed on. It's Hold on. Whoa, whoa. We're yeah. diving yeah. in. We're oh, diving oh, into oh, some yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm very curious. So when you say we, this is you and the person you had coffee with. Yeah. So we're partners. Okay. There's a story there that I need to hear. You <laughs> had coffee and then you became partners. How did that happen? I was able to come in and work with them as their underwriter and just like doing day-to-day stuff. And now I've grown because I didn't know anything when I first started. So like, they didn't have to give me that opportunity, but they saw the hard work and determination. And so I was able to just kind of start small and just be like, it's kind of like just doing basic things. And then I started to just keep educating myself, really look through how the process worked. And now I'm working in asset management and going out to contractors, speaking to contractors, property managers, um, underwriting the deals still. And so I'm doing a lot of work on that end. And so I was able to just kind of partner with them on the property. Uh, We got it through our lender relationship. He actually lived in the area in Little Rock, Arkansas. So he thought it was like a really good opportunity. And it was on the MLS, it was a 36 unit. And so it just, no one's going to go on the MLS and be like to buy their house and be like, I'm going to buy this 36 unit to be my resident. So we were able to just kind of go in there, get the financials. And it was, it's a great little deal. It's right off the main street of downtown. And so that was, that's just been so exciting to see. There's a lot of, that had a lot of different challenges to it. So I was able to just kind of grasp how to deal with them. And I think that's the way that I've learned the most is just through experience and, Yes. So that started from coffee. Yeah. <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> were they blown away that they said, if you're ever in town and next day, here you are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always, it's a funny story to always tell. And, um, but I think it all just comes with taking that action and just showing up. And even if you don't have like, if you, if you don't know what to do, just take that next step, because that's, what's just going to propel you into the next step and the next step. And I was very, like I didn't know, I wasn't very educated in it. And so it just takes time, but, um, I, yeah, they were blown away. <laughs> I would be as well. That's incredible. You know, I was going to ask you a question and you just answered it. The question was, what advice would you give somebody that's in their twenties? Even I don't think age matters, but somebody that's in a W2 job hates it, realizes they're sacrificing all of their time 
it's not where they want to be. And what you just said, I think is the answer. Just take the next step, whatever take, step it is, take a step, take a step. Even if that means reading a book about it. And I think that just like meeting people that are doing what you want to be doing, getting on the phone with people, going to meetups, having like the conversation or attending certain webinars, like it's all going to be helpful because you're just going to build upon that. It's always going to take the next step. It just, there's a lot of fear that's involved. And I think that's what people are afraid of is just getting out of their comfort zone. And I've been uncomfortable for like the last year, but I know that every time that I conquer the next step, I can look back and be like, well, I did this. So why can't I do the next one? And so I think it just comes with, okay, where where am I going to direct my energy to and where, what's going to get me to the next level. And it just all begins with believing in yourself, but also just taking that action and not letting fear guide you. I'm sorry. I'm blown away. You have an incredible outlook, a great mindset. Um, so back to the Nashville deal, you also mentioned you found it on the MLS and it's something I tell our best ever listeners often is look for mismarketed or mismanaged deals. And the MLS is a great spot to look because you know a lot of people are looking to brokers. I have broker relationships. I look for off-market deals. While all of that is great, we're missing the low-hanging fruit. That new or inexperienced residential realtor that lists a multifamily or a commercial property on the MLS. There's a ton of that out there. So I'm glad you brought that up as well. Uh, you ran into a lot of issues there. What was your role in resolving like the mold issues, the HUD issues? Yeah. So that was just speaking with our lender and speaking with the previous sellers of just like, how are we going to handle this mold issue? Um, but it took a lot of just back and forth with the groups. And then my role, I think came mostly with like the property management. I was just helping the transition of property management groups of like how, and the due diligence phases of like, how are we going to switch over the utilities or collect the balances and just working between those groups. And we actually ran through the, the property management group that we hired secondly, they were not doing the job that they said they were doing. And so we were able, we were, we had to like pick up a lot of work. And so I was on the phone with contractors. I even posted like Facebook marketplace posts to like get people into the unit. So it was great to just kind of experience like what a day-to-day -day life looks like for a property manager. And it's a lot of work, but it's just been helpful for me to learn. Um, but really just a lot of communication and um, the due diligence of just switching over from companies. Alessandra, how much handholding have you received? Or is this just learn as you go? Uh, it's learn as I go. So at first, I think it was I think the biggest challenge was like, okay, the speaking with contractors of like, what is the standard pricing or where are we supposed to be? What's the timeline? I think that I just had to get accustomed to that, but it took a lot of just like asking a lot of questions and getting a lot of different quotes to compare. And I think it's just been learn as I go. My Jason Yurisu, the person that I work with, he has a great background in construction. So it's it's just off, it's just in his brain. So I could just turn to him and be like, what is this? What is that? And so that's why I think it's so important to have people or partner with people that are just doing what you want to be doing that have that experience. I think that's the that's the best strategy, strategy to just get into the place that you want to be because you can just learn as you go and from experts and people that are experienced. What's an example of a mistake that you made and what would you have done differently? Oh man. Um, I can, I'm sure I know I've made many mistakes, but I don't know why I can't think of one right now. Think of um, an embarrassing moment and oh my God moment, or I can't believe I did this, like something that stood out something crazy. Oh, I can't even think of one, but I know that like speaking to contractors, I've probably said some dumb stuff because I just wasn't accustomed to like, how does this electrical thing work? But like, I'm sure I've just sounded silly, but I genuinely cannot think of one. I'm really bad when I'm Well, no, that's a good example. <laughs> so um, what would you have done differently? You know, because there's a learning curve, right? I mean, you're, yeah, you're the, talking like, to somebody who's been doing this for X number of years and here you are uh, asking a silly question. Is I there think something like you could have done differently? 
yeah, like during the due diligence phase, there was one point where I was on the property and a, or during just the inspection and I was on the property with like 12 different contractors and three of them getting different bids from everyone that I started to just lose track of like what I was supposed to be doing. And I think that I could have been better at just writing everything down and recording what I was doing, but also it's a space that I wasn't fully understanding yet at the time. So I think just being more um, educated and having someone that's more of an expert on site would be helpful, but now I can go in there like a breeze, but speak to those contractors. So like I think it, boss. yeah. So I think it just takes practice, but I've definitely said some, I'm, I'm sure I've said some silly stuff <laughs> and we all have. Uh, so what was your next property? Um, we are doing a 20 unit motel conversion up in North Nashville. We're turning into a short-term rental community, Airbnb. And this one has just been a full project, but it's been really exciting because I can just drive over there. It's like 10 minutes away just to like really get down into the nitty gritty of like every layer of the process versus the other property that's just in Little Rock. And it's just focusing on the, that communication with the property management, that the business plan is going according to plan, which it wasn't with them at first. And so that's why we had to also rehire a new property management company. Now it's going smoothly, but this one we're just handling on our own. And it's just been getting people on site, making sure that the schedule is just completely like no holes in it because it's just, there's so much so many people in and out of like, okay, the electrical needs to go here, but we need to make sure this is done first and then the electrical needs to go back again. And so I think it's been really fun for me. I know it sounds stressful for a lot of people because we have to make sure we're doing a lot of everything on time, but it's fun for me to just like see it happening before my eyes. And how did you guys find this deal? This one was actually all through a broker. Yeah. And it was marketed as a hotel. It was marketed as a motel. Yeah. Motel. Okay. And, um, the great idea of turning that into short-term rentals, doesn't Nashville have very strict rules on that? They do. So with zoning, you'd want to just contact the zoning department, but here, because it was already set up as a motel, it was perfect because we, people are just coming in and out anyways, but there are a lot of issues with the zoning department. And what's your role on this project? I'm doing asset management. So there is just, I am always out there just with the contractors. It's a lot of work and just making sure everything's going according to plan, according to budget, uh, speaking with the lenders on draws, like just working uh, just out there. <laughs> yeah. So asset management sounds simple, but you're doing everything, the renovations, the lease ups that you're going to run the project or the asset once it's up and running as well, right? Yeah, we have a third party uh, short-term rental property management group that's going to come in as soon as the property is ready. But because there's such an overhaul of work right now, it's probably not going to be online until like April or May, just because there's so much to be done. And it's been quite a journey. And it's just, it's exciting because Nashville is such a good market for people coming in and out, especially apparently there's more bachelorette parties here than there are in Las Vegas. <laughs> So I think it'll Nash be Vegas. Yeah. So it'll be just, the numbers are great and it's, it's super exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> How many hours a week do you work? A lot. I don't even, I feel like I couldn't tell you because if I get an email at, I, I, I wake up so early at like four in the morning. So sometimes I'll be emailing at four in the morning or when I get home, I'll be up on my email at 7 PM underwriting a deal. Like it just, it doesn't end, but that's okay because I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. So and I, the reason I asked that question is I want to contrast that to when you had your W-2 job in that office, in traffic, even though you may have worked less hours back then, the smile on your face now is amazing because like you love what you do and it's, it seems like it's very fulfilling. Um, so Congratulations to you. And again, at a young age, having this stuff figured out, what are you doing to inspire other people? I just want people to like, especially like there's not a lot of women in the industry. I think that a lot of people just are afraid of getting into something like this because there's a lot to learn. But it, like we said, it just takes taking the small steps. I think to inspire other people, I just like to 
I love to set up calendar Calendly links and just have like have phone calls. I like to help with mentoring others. So I'll just randomly get on a meeting with someone and overlook a deal with them that they're they're looking at, help them point out like what they're missing, how they could improve, who they can talk to, what they can just do to be stronger on their underwriting. Um, and then also just getting on panels or podcasts like this. Like I just want people to know that if they want like help, that I'm happy to just be a resource to them. I love just, I love helping others. And I want them to know that they are capable of doing something like this too, because I didn't used to think that I was, but I also just like pushed that out of my mind. I was like, okay, well, why can't I do it? So just knowing, letting other people know that it's possible to do what you want to do and take that, like, just make the leap. You are incredible and very inspirational. And I'm glad you're doing that. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, um, I want to, like I said, I want to have that geographical freedom. So I would like to travel a lot, but I also would just like to keep scaling my portfolio it was multifamily, possibly get into development at some point. Like I, I don't know what the future holds, but I think I'm on the right track to just leveling up each, each year, each year, just trying to get better, but also just spending more time with family and friends and being able to travel. That's my, I love traveling. It's my main goal and I love eating at restaurants. So I'll be eating somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Do you get to travel right now? Right now, um, a lot of like U.S. travel. So I've been doing some of that, um, like Denver at the conference. That was fun. I'm going to go to New York for my friend's wedding, which will be good. But I haven't been out of the country since before COVID. So that's something that I really want to make sure I'm doing. But I've been very busy right now. So I think I'm just I I'll make it work. I'll figure it out. <laughs> good. And what does your team look like right now? Is it just you and that one partner or is it a it's, giant so company? There's three of us. So it's okay. Jason and Peely and um, yeah, we are, they are amazing at what they do. And I'm so grateful to be a part of the, the team. So yeah, we're just going to continue scaling the and growing as a group and seeing where we're going to go next. Yeah. I am excited for you. Alessandra, what is your best real estate investing advice ever? just get started. I think that just take action. Don't let fear guide you. I think success lies on the other side of fear. So just know that you're capable of doing anything that you set your mind to just take action. Alessandra, are you ready for the best ever lightning round? Oh my gosh. They stress me out, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stressing me out now. All right, listen, let's take a breath and let's get through this. Alessandra, what is the best ever book you recently read? Oh man, I read, I think the psycho cybernetics book is really good to just shifting your mindset of the way that you see yourself. And I think that once you shift the way that you see yourself, then you can shift the way that you act on daily actions. So that's great for, that's a great book. Everyone should read it. And Alessandra, what's the best ever way you like to give back? Give back. Um, I, for friends and family, I love cooking a home cooked meal and ha sitting down at a table and just being there together and checking in on everyone. That's the way I love to give back to my family and friends. And Alessandra, how can the best ever listeners reach out to you? Yeah. So they can reach out to me at Alessandra at yerusiholdings.com. They can find me on LinkedIn, Alessandra Thompson, um, send me an email and yeah, that would be great. And your information will be in our show notes as well. Alessandra, it was actually a very good pleasure meeting you at the Best Ever Conference. Glad we got to do this podcast together. And thank you for sharing an inspirational story, moving from California to Nashville, showing up uh, because somebody invited you for coffee, showing up the very next day, and you're on your way to building a great portfolio. Thank you for sharing that inspiration with us and the Best Ever listeners. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to hearing the episode. And it was so great to meet you at the conference. Thank you again. Best ever listeners. Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, please leave us a five-star review. Share the podcast with anyone you think can benefit from it. Follow, subscribe, and have a best ever day. Mm -hmm.